Hello again, it's, uh, it's Paul Beckwith. So I've talked about how the lack of sea ice, when there's record low sea ice years, there tends to be a blocking pattern over Greenland. So a strong ridge, amplified ridge of the jet stream just kind of pegged over Greenland. And that means a couple different things. Um, it means in the winter, there's very little snow because it's a high pressure, stable air mass, cold air mass over Greenland. And in the summers, it means that there's, there's, there's no clouds either so that you can get the full intensity of the sun on Greenland and you can get record melting on the surface and record mass losses. Um, so, and, uh, so, so I'm gonna show um, you know, how much the glaciers are retreating, the fronts are retreating in various sections of Greenland um, over time and you can clearly see, um, you know, you can clearly see what's going on. Why some regions are having much greater loss than other regions. So I started explaining this this plot in the previous video. But first, I want to just show you, you know, this is Earth Null School. I have it on uh, mean sea level pressure at the surface. Okay, so you can see. Uh, you know, right now there's a, there's a high, you know, high over Greenland and low in the ocean there. So the high over Greenland means air leaves that rotate to the right, okay, coming this way around Greenland. So it leads to relatively high melt on Greenland in this situation. This is, uh, if you Google Arctic sea ice graphs and have a look at the first image, then this is what the sea ice uh, looks like that's left uh, as of August 23rd, 2020. And if I expand um, this image, you can see it over here. Okay, so, you know, if you're going to think of the, so with a, a high over here and the air circulation is this way, okay, clockwise, then the warm air from down here is carried up the coast, causing lots of melt on this coast of Greenland and there'll be a bit less melt on this side, okay? And also the sea ice is being pushed down here. So you keep, the, keep this pattern in mind for where the sea ice is when, you're look, when I'm talking about the glacier melt in the different sections of Greenland. So in this region here, this is the uh, weighted average of the cumulative front chain. So, so basically, um, you know, the, the front of the glaciers in this region is retreating as the numbers go down here. So there was, you know, some stability, you know, some, some not much retreat here. And then just before 2000 or around 2000, there was a very sharp drop in sharp retreatal, retreat of the glacier fronts in this region. And this is the... Um, so this is the, the left uh, vertical axis is the colored curve. And then the black is the, um, the, the cumulative, it's a, it's a delta H, the change in the height of the ice is a fraction of the total height. So right here, we've got a 15% 50, drop in the ice thickness, um, okay, of, of that particular, of, of, of the average, uh, you know, weighted of all the glaciers in this particular region, okay, so, is it a, so, so it's actually a drop of, it's a black curve, so it's a drop of, uh, you know, not, not quite 10% here, okay, so as the uh, glacier fronts are receding and receding and receding, the thickness is also declining, okay, so this is what you're seeing in this particular region, very abrupt change around 2000, if we go down the coastline, so central west coast of Greenland, we get a similar thing. We get a break point here uh, just before 2000 and then a fairly significant drop. And the thickness is also dropping um, significantly here. If we look at this particular region here, all in here, um, we, get a, the, we don't get a sharp drop around 2000, we get one about 2005, and then there's an abrupt drop, and then st stability, and then an abrupt, uh, another abrupt drop around 2016 or so. Okay, and you can see the thickness dropping here. You know, this, so this will have to do with how much ice is going through Fram Strait, sea ice, and 
you know, the direction of the flow around Greenland. So if it's a high here, it'll be clockwise. And if it's a low pressure area, a trough over this region, then the air is coming in deflecting to the right. So it would be counterclockwise flow. Okay, so counterclockwise flow would tend to melt this side out more. Clockwise flow would tend to melt out this side more uh, because the air is warmer here and colder up here. You can just kind of figure that out. And then uh, down in this region here, um, you know, the drop is more, there, there was a sharp drop here around to, to, to 2005. And then, you know, but it's more, more of a sustained drop right, it recovered, and then the thickness here is dropping accordingly, okay? So this kind of, you can kind of relate this to the, to the pattern, the weather pattern, the pressure pattern over Greenland, and also, which determines the flow of the air clockwise or counterclockwise around Greenland, but also the, what's going on with the, the sea ice. Okay, so those are the main trends. Okay, so that's this paper. Okay, now, the next paper, the next article was new research reveals effect of global warming on Greenland ice melt. So August 17th, a few days after the, the previous paper. And this looked at 30 years of scientific data on the melting of Greenland ice. Um, so what it did is they looked at um, this, the researchers here, they, they analyzed all the Greenland surface air temperature data at weather stations all around Greenland on the coast and inland um, for the last three decades through to 2019. And they found that Greenland coastal regions warmed significantly by about 4.4 degrees Celsius in the winter and by 1.7 degrees Celsius in the summer from 1991 to 2019. Um, they found that for every one degree Celsius of summer warming, there was 91 billion tons or gigatons per year of surface mass loss and, a to and, a and 116 billion tons per year of total mass loss from the ice sheet. So the difference between these two numbers is about 27 and that would be the discharge, that would be the calving and that would be the um, submarine loss, the melting loss from warm ocean melting the lower part of the ice shelf. Um, they said Greenland is likely to warm four to 6.6 .6 degrees by the year 2100. You know, I would take the 2100 and say, call it, call it the year that you think. I mean, what is it, 2050 maybe, 2040? I mean, 2100 seems a stretch for that temperature when we're given that we're in abrupt climate change. And they calculated the rise in, in sea level as well. Okay, they found that the Greenland blocking, uh, like the previous paper, played a crucial role in the melt in the summer of 2019, which surpassed the, alt, um, it, it beat the record, the previous record in 2012 by about 15%. Okay, the Greenland ice sheet is one of the most sensitive and reliable measures of global climate change. Okay, so, you know, that and uh, ocean rise. Okay, so let's look at the details. The devil's always in the details. So green, here's the paper, Greenland surface air temperature changes uh, from 1981 to 2019 and implications for ice sheet melt and mass balance change. This paper, um, <coughs> like it just <coughs> came out recently. And Conrad Steffen um, is no longer with us. He perished in the Swiss camp uh, crevasse, you know, very, very sad. Okay, so some of the key points here. Um, well, let's have a look at the, uh, at some of the data, but I mean, the key points I've already, t I've already told you. Um, so they looked at an updated analysis of instrumental, so weather stations, Greenland monthly temperature data to 2019, focusing only, mainly on coastal stations, but also looking at ice sheet uh, records from Swiss Camp and Summit. Significant summer coastal warming of 1.7 degrees C occurred from 1991 to 2019, and in the winter it was 4.4. You know, this is not a surprise. We're seeing the reason why the summer temperature, summer warming is lower is because of all the ice there, because a lot of that energy goes into latent heat, melting of ice, not in raising the temperature. With no ice 
in the Arctic, you would have equal numbers in winter and summer. Okay, uh, for each one degree C of summer warming, there's 91 gigatons per year of, of surface mass loss, 116 gigatons per year total. So surface mass loss plus 26 gigatons per year of solid ice discharge. So this is ice calving, but also uh, ice melting from below. Um, that occurs for each one degree C of summer warm warming. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the data. So this is a map of Greenland. These are all the weather stations that are involved in the study. There's Swiss camp here um, where, where Conrad Stefan uh, perished in the crevasse. Here's summit, the summit station here, you know, on the, uh, the highest elevation point, the summit of, the, of, 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 the, uh, of Greenland. Okay, uh, so if you just look at, there's lots of charts and tables and things, but I'm just gonna have a look at some of the graphs here. So this is mean daily air temperature at a bunch of stations, mean maximum daily air temperature and minimum daily air temperature. Um, this is March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. So winter and winter and summer, summer here, um, spring, um, fall and winter. And you can see the variations throughout the years in these numbers, you can see the general warming trends, uh, you know, across the various stations. And these, these different colors represent different stations here. And this is a, a merging together of a bunch of stations on that. So here is an example of summer, June, July, August temperature, the green line and July mean temp surface air temperature at Swiss camp, right, which is where um, Conrad Steffen uh, perished in a glacier just a few weeks ago. And this is the, um, this is Summit Greenland, okay? This is the data from, from Summit Greenland. Um, uh, here, uh, June, July, August mean surface air temperature, okay? Okay, so you can see the rise even at the highest elevations of, of Greenland. And we'll go back down. And this is showing, um, this is the seasonal temperature trends, December, January, February. So most of the warming in the winter. And uh, this is the spring, and this is the summer, and this is the fall. Okay, yeah, so you can see the effects. And again, what happens from year to year. So this is from 91 to 2019, 2001 to 2019. And depending, you know, when, when there's low melting in Greenland, it's probably a low pressure area over Greenland. When there's a high pressure area of blocking, then you get the very, very high temperatures and very high melting. Um, this is comparing 2019 to 2012. So 2019 minus 2012. So clearly in 2012, it was warmer. The, this, the air temperature over Greenland most of Greenland was much warmer, except for the northern areas. These were warmer in 2019. So one of the big, the reason why 2019, a big reason why 2019 set a record for melt overall in Greenland is because of the high pressure area in the winter. So the lack of snowfall to rebuild up the glacier. Okay, this is the melt extent um, in 2019 is the black line and in the red is 2012 so there's a lot more melting so the surface of Greenland was hotter in 2012 there was a lot more melting at the surface but there was a lot less snow coverage to recover the mass and this is the so from June 1st to August 31st 2019 there was huge amounts of melting um, this is 2019 compared to 2012, and there's huge amounts of melting. Um, and again, the Greenland blocking play is an important role. So this is Greenland blocking in 2012. When the cur green curve is high, there's blocking. And in 2019, the, the blocking was elevated for much longer, you know, pretty much over the whole record, um, you know, because the distance from the red curve to the black is is uh, the normal situation is higher. So the blocking caused a huge amount of melting. And um, okay, so I'm gonna, this is a good place to continue in the next video. So thanks for listening.